Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time where we can relax and craft together and uh, for about an hour here. And I usually work on projects from beginning to end. Uh, and we are going to continue our quilt as you go project. I have not done quilt as you go, that, that technique before this project. And I'm having a really good time with it so far. So this is for the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along. And last night we finished quilting one of our segments here and here's the back did some free motion quilting and uh, we are going to attach we're going to trim this down and attach it to our other piece so this is the part that we have done already we have two of those segments and these are already fully quilted and we've attached them together using the quilt as you go process. So we got our cute little cornerstones popping up in there. And uh, we're gonna work on that tonight. Let's put a third, let's put the third section on here. So that is the plan. Um, I, I, I at least wanna attach everything. I don't know if we'll do all the hand stitching. I'll show you what that entails. Uh, but we're going to, we're gonna see how far we get on this tonight, guys. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around. Let's get going. Thanks for joining me again, guys. Okay, here we are. So we finished quilting this last night, which was so fun. This is giving me tons of practice on free motion quilting, uh, this process. So I just gonna have, you know, this little piece here and we can move it around really easy to practice uh, the free motion quilting versus having a whole giant quilt. So I'm stoked about that. I'm stoked to keep learning. Um, all right, so first thing up is we have to cut this down to size. So this is gonna end up being a 13 inch square. So we started out with six and a half inch blocks and then we added a one inch sashing to it. So once you get rid of all the seam allowances, then you have like a six and a quarter here, six and a quarter here, and then a half inch here. And that ends up being the 13 inches. So unfortunately I do not have a fancy 13 inch, uh, square here ruler i don't think 13 inches is very common uh compared to like this 12 12 and a half inch one here um so i'm gonna have to try and center this and we'll see how we do um and uh we're gonna try and get this to a nice uh 13 inch square so i'm gonna i know that right at the center of my sashing that should be about that six and a half inch mark and that I can measure on here. So I'm just gonna put like six and a half inches right in the center of my, my sashing here. It's a little tough with this ruler. We're gonna wing it, we're gonna make it work. And then I want six and a half inches on this top sashing as well. So I think kind of about there, half inch mark, half inch mark. Once we get the first cut, it'll be a whole lot easier. So I think we're gonna just kinda do it right there. That looks pretty good on this edge. Um, I don't have a ruler that stretches that whole way though. So let's just kind of give this a go. Uh, this is a, gonna be a little goofy, but let's get a straight edge here and uh, move this out of the way and then get a straight edge here. All right, I think this is gonna be our first edge. We're just calling it right here. Okay, Whew, first cut. So um, you can tell that we, we do have a little bit of the edge here. We have um, batting here, 
which is just how it's going to be. I mean, when we quilt this, it sucks in a little bit. So I think we're going to just always have a little batting edge. I'm hoping that gets covered up though when we, um, when we sew our edge on here. All right, let's, uh, let's try and square this up. So we have one straight edge now. Now we should be able to use this ruler a little bit better. Okay, again, we want this half inch mark. And actually, if we go this way, then my half inch marks are on the edges here, which is nice. Okay, middle, middle, and I'm going on, I'm aligning this to the nice bottom edge. Okay, I think this is about right, right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this double ruler thing again, I think. And actually, I might just go up and then stop and scooch ahead a little bit. There, we're gonna go right there. And I'm just gonna have to move it up a hair to finish this off. Lining it on that edge. Okay, phew. All right, two edges done. Let's finish this up. So now this should be at that 13 inch mark. So let's see. I'm gonna just um, add that half of an inch with this ruler. Line up the half of an inch straight edge here. Line it up here. Then we should have our 13 inches. Whew. Not a fan of all this squaring up. It's so easy when you have a ruler that's the exact perfect size. You know what? I think we're fine. We're going to go right here. And again, let's just scooch it up a hair. All right, and we will get our last edge. Man, it looks so much cleaner and prettier. This may be a little situation though where we are gonna have to add an edge onto here um, just cause the white is the border. I think we need to add a little bit to it. We'll see. If we have a quarter inch, a little less than a quarter inch, then, then we're going to be fine. It will get covered up. Okay. Good enough. Enough of that. So, all right, let's take a look at this quick. Um, all right, so this is getting real close to a quarter inch. Um, and then I'm a little worried up top here. That's a lot of, that's a lot of batting right there. I'm, I'm tempted to add a little piece of white right there. Man, I don't know, down here too, maybe let's just measure that off. So just the act of quilting scrunches it in a little bit. I'm sure there's some sort of trick for this, uh, but I don't know. All right, this is a quarter inch. We actually don't have to deal with this edge right now. We're only gonna deal with this edge and this edge is looking pretty good. So maybe we just not deal with it at all. Um, oh, Gretchen, what I'm talking about is you can see the batting right here. So um, when I quilted this, since we cut these blocks down to the six and a half inches for the Splendid Sampler 2, when I quilted it, um, it pulled in on the fabric a little. So instead of cutting it and having it be a perfect 13 inches, it's actually a little shy of the 13 inches. So 
Um, so that's the batting is showing through a little bit on the edge. Um, and I might be able to cover it up when I sew, um, but I don't know, it's a little much right there. Uh, but I think again, our, this is the side that we're gonna be dealing with tonight because this is the side that's gonna connect to our part that we already have complete here. And we don't, I think I have enough, I think I'm close enough to the edge to the edge here. So I think, um, I think we'll be fine. I do have maybe a little trick for if this happens again. Um, we can, after we've cut it down, we can add, like I could add a little piece of white here and then fold it over and trim it down. That might, um, that might work for us. But I think, um, I think we're okay tonight. So I think I'm gonna just keep going here. We're gonna add this piece right here, these two pieces together. So we will have our three segments together. Um, so, all right, let's get prepped for adding the sashing. So this is one that we've done already. Um, we need to make some back sashing and some front sashing for this. So let's set all of these guys aside. Actually, we can fold up our little foldy ruler here or cutting mat here. Okay, so I have some fabric for the backing, but I don't have this trimmed yet. Um, so for the backing, um, the back binding, or the back sashing piece, that's this piece right here that connects the two, we need a one and a half inch by 13 inch strip. So it has to be as tall as this, um, and then one and a half inches wide. So let's just trim this down since we have all the rulers and everything here right now. Uh, let's just give this a little press. I think we'll be able to get it out of this little side um, scrappy piece here. All right, first off, let's just see. We might just be able to trim this whole piece off. It's about 13 inches. Yeah. So before we even get going, I'm just going to roughly cut this off. So here's a scrap that we can use later for something. And uh, we will trim our 13 inch piece out of here. Yeah, no, Lean, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So in the future, when we finish our splendid sampler blocks, if there's uh, if there's a trimmable area around it, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Some of our blocks end up being exactly the same, exactly like the size they're intended to, the six and a half inches. So those will end up six and a half inches. But like this one, for example, um, we had an area that we could trim and I did not trim it for this. I only trimmed the two sides that were connecting to other pieces, but I left the edges and look, we have enough that one goes to the edge and this goes pretty much to the edge. So by leaving, by not trimming this piece, it left me with um, some leeway here versus like this one where I didn't, um, where I did trim it and, and now I've got, you know, a whole gap there. So in the future, I'm definitely not going to trim my blocks to the six and a half inches until I decide where they're gonna go in this quilt as you go technique. Um, so that's, Yep, I think that's that's totally my plan for next time. All right, let's get a nice straight edge here. There we go. And I'm just gonna rotate this whole guy. And let's get uh, the one and a half inch section here now. I think it's one and a half. Yeah, because we end up with half. That'll be one. Yep, one and a half. We're right. <laughs> I think we had this issue last time. I kept forgetting. Okay, one and a half. We're good. Okay. Now we need 13 inches. So let's, let's trim up. Actually, we can kind of just fold this in half, can't we? So we can just measure this at six and a half inches and then we should have our 13 and a half. 
six and a half. Let's just use our six and a half inch ruler here. Okay. There we are. Easy way to get two nice clean ends. All right, so for this back piece, we also need to uh, press it in half. So we want, it's kind of like making a binding. So if you're using pattern fabric, you want to sew the wrong sides together so that the right side is um, exposed. So in, in this case, it doesn't really matter so much because I'm using a solid fabric. Oops, dropping stuff here. So let's start by just folding this edge. There we are. Actually, I wonder if there's a right and wrong side. I had a color issue last time. I don't know, looks the same. All right, press that. And now I'm just gonna go down this edge and keep folding in half. Shimmy it up. Try not to stretch it at all. Okay, so that is our back binding piece ready to go. And then we've already cut our front pieces. Not all of them, but we've cut quite a few. So these are a different size than that back piece. So this we cut to one and a half inches wide. This we're cutting to one inch. Uh, so I've already done that. And you know we're making we're making a we're mimicking this sashing piece. So I have a six and a half inch piece strip, and then a little square, and then another six and a half inch. Piece. So that's what we got here. This is the same thing we, we're using for the sashing. So I'm just picking one. Let's, let's this blue's on top. Let's just let's just do that. Um, I'm gonna have to cut out some more of these little squares later, and then we have a bottom piece. So we have to prep this first. So we need to sew these together, and uh, um, that is the plan. You have a Grey's Anatomy repeat in the background. That's funny. I was just watching Grey's uh, before coming on here tonight. That's been my go-to just relaxing binge show <laughs> as of late. All right. So I still have the um, I still have the walking foot on from last night. So I'm going to switch that to my normal. Um, oh, you know what? Let's try the walk or the the quilting foot. Let's try a walking foot uh, tonight. So this is my walking foot. This will move the bottom of the fabric and the top of the fabric at the same time. I think last time we were gonna give that a try. So, all right, let's get rid of this foot. This guy's actually kind of hard to, hard, a difficult foot to take off this walk, or this uh, westerly ruler foot here. Um, but all right, that's off. So now when I put this on, I have to, this part goes on the dial here, but then this part goes up on my screw up there and that's gonna help move things up and down. And man, this guy's fuzzy. I should give him a little cleaning one of these times. It's been a while since I've used the, the walking foot here. There we go. Screw that on. All right, ready to go. So first of all, uh, we need to sew these little bits together. So let's put the right sides together here. I can use the walking foot for, for just these little bits. That's gonna be perfectly fine. Let's get our little leaders down here. Ooh has a nice kerchunk sound. It's been a while since I've used this piece. This uh, walking foot. All right, we need to get the other side done. There we go, cute. 
right sides together. All right, and there we are. So let's press this. Head over to the iron again. And uh, we are going to just, I think what we, I think we press them outward. So we'll, we'll do that again. Actually, I don't think it matters so much. There, outward. Outward, pressing the seam allowances outward here. Flip it around, just give it a good final little press. Okay, we are ready to sew all of our pieces together here. So this is how we're gonna start. We have our, our quilt as you go piece that we already have done here. So this piece, oh, you know what? I did a similar one to here. We could go on the front. Should we go on? Eh, well, whatever. It can, it can have a same, same piece. It's gonna, it's gonna be fine. All right, so this, uh, we have to match up these seams with these right here. And I'm also going to sew this guy on at the same time. So this gets sewn to the background right here, top to bottom. I think we did it that way last time. Oh, it looks like we might have sewn it on the second half. Yeah, I'm not sure it matters. Let's just sew it on now. So I'm gonna do all three layers this time around. So I'm gonna use my Wonder Clips. You can use some pins if you like. But I'm gonna start by matching, matching up these seams. So I want these seams right here for my sashing to match up with these two seams here. So let's just kind of eyeball that. I did press them in the opposite direction, the seams, so they should nest together. I'm gonna put a clip right there. All right, and then one on the other side as well. Clip that. If these don't end up being perfect, that's okay too. Ooh. Ah, dropping stuff today. Lost a clip and my, and my rotary cutter there. All right. And now before I get too far, I'm gonna, well, let's, let's just clip the end here, but I'm gonna add the background piece as well in a, in a sec here. I just wanna get these in place before I get too far. Okay, so now the raw edge of the background, the two raw edge of these background pieces, those are gonna, that's gonna be what we sew in. So we're sewing a bunch of layers together here. All right, let's match this top piece first. Just reclip that. Just gonna go down the row a little bit. Let's add some clips in the middle here. Alright, I'm just going to jump over to this side. This might be a little easier to do on a flat surface. Um, let's get this last edge. So it, they, they're both 13 inches, so we should end up in the same, same spot here. There we go. And I'm going to just clip one more time just for safekeeping, keeping those edges lined up. All right, so those are our um, pile of edges here. So I'm gonna sew from the top to the bottom and we should be good to go for this first half. Let's see how we do. I think we might've, uh, I can't quite remember. This is the only the second time that I've done this quilt as you go, but I think we might've sewn that bottom edge on um, the bottom binding 
thing. I might have done that with my second round, like the next step, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Got the walking foot here. I'm gonna move the cutting board actually so it slides a little bit better. We're starting to gain in size here now with these uh, three pieces together. The three uh, chunks here. Yeah, so this is the top sashing right here. We have the top sashing and then our quilted piece and then the bottom sashing. So a whole pile of stuff layered here. Okay, and the walking foot is definitely working a little bit nicer than just my normal um, quilting foot was last time so that's good all right there we go um i i just happen to know where my quarter inch is on my base here um i could have put my uh, uh, this guy back on it and measured um i do have this neat little tool called uh it's a perfect piecing seam guide by Perkins Dry Goods. So if you Google Perkins Dry Goods and Seam Guide, what's nice about it is it has that scant quarter inch right here and it has a hole right in there. So I can put the, um, the needle right into that hole. And why don't we just do it now? I'll put the needle right into that hole. I'm lowering the needle. There we go. I'm in, I'm in the, the hole in this ruler here. And I'm just kind of making sure this is straight. And then I can take my little postcard here and line it up. There we go. So now I got a little bit more length here. I just kind of know from the past that if I'm about halfway into my, um, halfway over my, my feed dog, that's about my quarter inch mark. So I'm just going by memory, but yeah, this, this per Perkins dry goods little ruler is kind of, kind of fancy. Um, I, I totally recommend grabbing one of them, especially if you're like learning a new machine or something and you're just kind of learning where is that quarter inch. All right. So here we are. So now we have our first side. So I can flip this around like that. And uh, we have this guy hanging out here on the back too. So we're gonna just let that hang. And now we are going to just kind of, I'm gonna just finger press this over. I don't think we need to really press it um, yet. And uh, now I'm going to get my new piece out here. This is what the one that we worked on the other night. And I'm going to put right sides together and we're going to line this up. And you know what? I think I'm going to flip it around like this just so I can easily see the edge here. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up these seams with my two sashing seams. And then we're going to, going to just go down this edge as well. We are not going to sew our little flap. We're going to leave that as is. So leave that folded back. We're not gonna worry about that. I'm only this time sewing that front sashing to the new piece here. So let's grab some clips again. Wow, it's definitely getting heftier. Having, um, having these three sections together. I might not always keep adding. Um, I, I might just continue making smaller sections of this quilt and then putting them all together in a bigger area when we're done here. We'll see how it goes. See how things fly. Oh, I really am liking the quilt as you go, Noeline. It's just, there's two things that I'm really liking about it. 
three things really. First thing is I always love a good magic trick. <laughs> and I feel like this is, this is um, kind of magic that you're quilting it before, um, the, or that you're able to put together quilted pieces together and have them, you know, not have a raw edge. And that's what we're doing here. So that's a neat magic trick. Um, I also just love that we can sew on a smaller piece, like we can practice quilting on a smaller piece. Uh, that's been really great because I've been trying to learn how to free motion quilt. And, uh, uh, and it's just so nice to magically have a whole section of this quilted and finished um, <laughs> without the quilt being done. Like once you finish a quilt, it's such a process to actually finish it, you know, with all, with all the, um, you have to sandwich it together and quilt and bind it and all that. We're, we're doing the sandwiching and the quilting so much earlier and that's just refreshing and nice. You know what? I am gonna actually use my grip it to help move this along a little bit. I, I could use just a little bit of a grip here. Help shimmy some of these things along. Cause I got, I got quite a bit of bulk over here now all of a sudden and, and this grip it is just gonna help me out a hair. Oop, that folded over the edge a little bit. So I'm hoping this is covering, I didn't line this up very well, but well. Um, I'm hoping this is covering up some of those seams. Ooh, something's, oh, I got a little, Oh, there we go. Stuff stuck. All right, let's get an ender here. I got attached to the other end. Okay. Let's see how we did here. I'm really liking this yellow fabric for the back. We're gonna have to cut some more fabric next time. But all right, now this should open up. We'll snip this off. But here we go. This is that sashing that we just added. It looks like it's just part of the quilt here, um, except for that it's not quilted, but that's okay. Uh, that's, that's blank there. And then the only thing we have to do yet is when we flip it around to the back, um, now we can flip this edge over and we hand stitch that on. So just how we, we hand stitched this one, we're gonna hand stitch this one. And really, you could probably leave this all to the end if you wanted, if you just wanted a whole um, big, just sit in front of a couple movies and, and bind for a little, you could leave a few of these in the row and then just do them all at once. But we'll, um, we'll try it here. Uh, we have a little time yet. I don't know if we'll finish, but we will give it a go. Let's see, let's get down lower here. Um, I'm gonna grab, let's see, do I have any? Oh no, I'm gonna use, um, I'm just gonna cut, I cut uh, my thread from my machine here. And I'm gonna grab, we're gonna grab Zeb here. He is the holder of needles. I'm gonna grab my little bent straw needle. I really have to put this on my Amazon list. I keep, I the moment I stop using it, I forget about it, but it is so bent, but I, I like it. These little straw needles, they're they're longer than normal needles and they work really nice for, for binding here. So, all right, I'm going to get some thread. I want enough thread that it'll go this whole way. So I'm getting about eh, a little over 24 inches or so. There we go. Yeah, that's true. Um, the binding, these little bindings not being quilted like the rest of it will give some definition. It'll kind of frame these little squares up, which is kind of fun. 
And I'm sure you could plan for it a little bit better. Like I could have left the other um, back sash or the other sashings unquilted, but I like I, I had fun quilting them. Did you sew the back sashing on last time? Yeah, so this is, Gretchen, this is exactly how I did it last time. So if you can see here, um, I folded over the edge and here you can, you can see all the little hand stitches. So the same difference. You could actually machine stitch this down. So um, when I sew the other piece on, I could have flipped this over and then sewn along the edge and uh, then it would be done with the machine stitching. But I kind of like this process where, where we hand stitch it. So here's this one. I had a little difficult time last time with this. I think I had to hold it and then kind of hold, hold this piece too, kind of like I'm doing a binding. And then just make sure not to go all the way through. So I tied a knot in one end and I'm gonna just kind of grab the edge a little bit here. All right, and I've, I've folded it over that edge. I can use my sewing line as a guide, but I'm just folding it over. And we are gonna just hand stitch this on just like how I do do a binding. So I'm, I'm going into the back piece, going about a stitch length over and then coming up in the back and the binding piece. And um, that, is, that is the stitch. So again, just right across into the back and then over and then into the back and the binding piece. And again, I'm, I'm making, I have this folded over just so it's easy to hold because it's not easy to hold if I lay it flat. So I'm just kind of bunching it up for myself here. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely not going through all the fabric. I'm just going through the back little pieces here. And I don't think I need to fold it. I think, I th or I don't, I don't need to iron it. I, I'm holding it just fine. I don't think it's, uh, I think we'll be good. Yeah, you could throw a wonder clip on here. This is actually working just fine for me. I think I don't. I don't think I need a wonder clip. That feels just like a binding. The trick for me to make it comfortable was folding over this edge. We, I had to figure that out last time, but now I'm good. This should go pretty quickly. If you don't like binding, um, then you could machine quilt it, but also maybe maybe if you just don't like binding because you don't like going around the entire quilt all at once, you might like this because it's just a little, you know, in my case, 13 inches, 13 inch segment that we got to stitch through. It's not too bad. Oop, lost my needle already, sheesh. Spread that guy again. Ooh, I need a nice new edge on there. It's, I think I split my thread. Just trim it. All right, there we are. All right, but we gotta we gotta start there. So that's uh, attached. Next bit. I think this actually went pretty quickly. So I think um, for, let's see, there's going to be about a hundred blocks in this quilt, I think. That means I should, these segments of four, I should be able to get five segments of four going one way and five segments of four going the other way if I'm making a perfectly square quilt, which I don't, I mean, I guess I haven't thought really that far ahead yet, but in theory, um, that's how this could all go down when we're done. So I might just keep adding till I'm five across. So basically 20 blocks across and um, just do rows of five. You folded this in half like a binding. Yep, I did this exactly, exactly like that. 
I did not do that with the front sashing, Gretchen, um, because the front sashing got sewn on just like, um, just like we sewed the normal sashing in the middle, it's as if we just sewed it in between two blocks. This back binding thing, this is kind of the unique part of it. If that makes sense. All right, it's cruising. We're a quarter of the way done. I'm just kind of laying it flat to fold it over again and then just grabbing it up. Seems to be working a-okay. I really like this hand stitching part. I like hand binding uh, quilts, so. I actually find this very enjoyable. Um, again, you can machine stitch this down. Some people, when they know they're going to machine stitch it down, sometime, sometimes they will um, put the binding type piece on the front, and then when they fold it over, they can see it a little bit better. And then they have the, the like sashing, um, that one inch piece on the, on the um, back, but I'm doing it the opposite way. Um, there is batting in these junctions because of the seam allowance. So that's why I'm doing um, that's why I'm doing this so it ends up at a half inch because I have a quarter inch seam allowance on either side and there's batting in those seam allowances. So that's how I'm achieving batting. Um, if you did a wider piece, then I don't think you would have that batting in there. You'd have to plan for it a little bit more um, like in your blocks. So by having just these itty bitty kind of half inch, uh, sashing pieces when I'm done. That's how I get, that's how I have the batting. It's just the quarter inch seam allowance makes that. So that's why, that's why I made such tiny sashing in the middle of my blocks. I'm sure there is a way to do larger sashing. This is just, this is the, uh, this is the method that I, uh, looked up for quilt as you go. My mom is doing this method too for hers. So I thought I'd give this a try. And, and this particular method meant small itty bitty sashings, which I think are kind of cute and, and work for this quilt. So um, if I do this again, this technique, I'll try something else maybe. This is my first time with the, with the quilt as you go and I'm totally liking it. I wasn't sure I was gonna like it uh, cause there was all this hand stitching in the middle and I don't know, the idea of these raw edges being put together. Something about it seemed weird to me, but now that I'm actually doing it, I really love that I get a quilt in these smaller segments. I, I think that's kind of my favorite part so far. That's been really helpful. It's been great practice. Yeah, and I, I like that too, Deborah. This, this solid background is really kind of showing off the quilting quite a bit, and that's been kind of, that's kind of neat. I'm definitely trying to get better, or at least practice. I'm trying to put the hours in to some free motion quilting. So I'm hoping, hoping I get better at free motion quilting by the time, by the time the splendid sampler quilt is done. Oh, but I'm so excited that, you know, once the splendid sampler, we get it in new blocks every Thursday, right? So every time, uh, as we progress through the quilt. I'm already gonna have the quilt like freaking done here. You know what I mean? Just cause we, it's gonna be quilted and put together already. So as we're making the block still, the quilt's getting done and that's gonna be kind of magical. Like as we finish the last block, we'll just be like, just have to bind the quilt and that'll be, that'll be that, you know? So that's that, um, the time saving uh, piece at the end of this uh, project is kind of what I'm looking forward to. A lot actually that's that's a good enough reason to do a quilt as you go as a process I think I'm sure I don't think it would work for every quilt like this this works fine because we have lots of blocks and they're all the same size if you're doing a quilt that has different size blocks or yeah just a lot of other stuff going on with it it, it might not be the right process if you did a wider sashing, you would nearly have to put, yeah, you would, I think you, exactly, Noeline, you'd have to put, if you did a wider sashing than this, you'd have to put batting in somehow, or you'd have to make your blocks bigger 
to make up and like take a huge piece off of your block to make up for, you know, to have bigger seam allowances with batting in. But yeah, my guess is you'd, you'd have to cut batting strips or something. Somehow you'd have to get the extra piece of, of batting in as well. Maybe when we sew, when we sew this on, you sew in another piece of batting. I, I'm not sure. And, and that's why I'm doing this process. Uh, just because the batting's built in because we have those, those quarter inch seam allowances. So by doing just these half inch sashings, we get those quarter inch seam allowances of batting built in. I don't know how you do it differently, but I know people do. <laughs> so I'm sure there's tricks out there. So if you want a different sashing, I would, I would Google, give that a Google. But so far for my first time, I'm, I'm liking these little itty bitty half inch sashings. Thanks, Linda. I am definitely having fun working on the quilting. Uh, that's that's something I want to just keep keep trying to get get better at. All right, we are almost done with this. I got about four more inches. I'm running into the side of my sewing machine over here. I wasn't sure we were going to finish this, but this uh, hand stitching actually goes pretty quickly. I hope I have enough thread. I think I might have just enough. I like kind of laying it flat and folding a piece over though and then starting it up again. It'll be interesting to sew these big strips uh, together. Like the, the rows of five, I'm kind of curious how that will go. A little bit more cumbersome, I'm sure, but it'll work. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, I, I'm. A, if you um, don't know the story behind these color, I mean, there's not really a story, but uh, with the my color choices of this quilt, I've been. Uh, if you've seen any of my quilts as of late, here they've all been like really bright and kind of saturated, juicy colors, and. Uh, I realized that, oh man, I'm just kind of automatically going towards those colors. And I wanted to give myself a challenge with this quilt by just doing all kind of pale, um, low val like contrasting value um, colors. So I went through my stash of fabric and I was looking for like all the beiges and whites, <laughs> but all my, all the light colors, but all the light colors ended up kind of being, I had some beiges and light browns, but a lot of them ended up being pale yellows. <laughs> so this is kind of turned into a pale yellow quilt. And I, and I wanted to do white for all the backgrounds uh, as best I could for all my blocks. Uh, just because I know that's a thing where people do the same background color for, for blocks and I've never done that. So I thought I'd give that a try. Ugh, stabbed myself. Um, so I have the white backgrounds with kind of mostly pale yellow. Uh, pieces to the blocks and I thought this um, I had this color fabric and I thought this would be so pretty for the back Especially like if you fold over an edge and you have the white background and then this little yellow Gets folded over. I thought that'd be just really pretty. So I, I'm excited for this Pale yellow black or back, but I, I I didn't have enough. I thought I had a whole bolt of this, but I didn't um, so luckily mom had some left over so I'm using <laughs> I'm using up her bolt of, of this color, but um, since I'm all out and she's going to be, she's was pretty much all out too, so we must use this color a lot. I think it's just a great color for the backings of baby quilts and stuff, so I don't know. I might have to get another bolt of this pale yellow. We use it a lot. Oh, Carla, I'll have to... I'll have to look up that, that book. That sounds interesting. 
All right, we're almost done. Two more stitches and I'll tie a little knot. All right, let's, let's see if I remember how to do a knicker knot. So I'm gonna go around the edge here. Go around one more time. I'm a little backwards for my knicker knot. So, all right. I think I go from one side and then the other side. And pull through. There we go. All right, I can put my needle away back into Zeb. We'll trim this and uh, we have our next section. So here we are. So this is what we just stitched. Uh, here's that back binding piece. Um, here's our one from before. And so if we flip around to the front, you know, I, I never pressed this. I still could, I suppose but I think we're okay. But here is our segment. So we put our two segments together and we now have a row of, of six. So that's, it's coming along you guys. So now we need four more blocks before we can do the next section, but it's feeling like a quilt here. <laughs> All right guys, I'm gonna flip you around and I'll show you, I'll show you this and we'll call it an evening here. Hello, so that went well. We got another whole section on. Uh, let me give it, let me show you guys here. It's like a quilt, it's a real quilt happening. <laughs> so here we are. This part of the quilt is completely done now, which is just, ugh, just makes me happy. So let's see, we have one, two, we have um, six, 12 blocks together here. So six across, uh, soon, uh, like, like I said, we're going to go for 20 across. Totally digging it though. It's a fully quilted quilt here. And here's, here's the back. Just, you want to see all the quilting. It's pretty dense quilting, but that's okay. I think that's kind of fun. All right. So that's awesome. We are a little bit further with that. And um, let's see, tomorrow's Wednesday. I think we'll go, we'll get a little bit farther in block 20. So we have the pieces cut or almost cut. I think it'll be time to start sewing on that, that a little bit. Get a little further before we get a new block. That's always nice. Awesome. And I think I only have one more block complete. So we need three more blocks before we can make, before we can add to this at all. Uh, but we're getting there. Always feels good to add another section. <laughs> so awesome, you guys. Thanks again for joining me. I will get this up onto YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. I did not get uh, la yesterday's up yet. It, the recording didn't quite work, so that one won't have comments. Uh, this one I think will be okay, though. So we, I'll try and get both of those up tonight yet. Uh, but thanks again, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. Good night.